Hello everyone, I'm FM Greeno and welcome along to the first episode of Bottom to Top, the series where I'm going to take a team that's predicted to finish bottom in the second tier and try and get them promoted and challenging for honours in the top tier. If you saw the preview episode published earlier in the week, you'll have seen there were eight potential destinations, various leagues throughout Europe that we were looking at. Um, in the end, we spun the wheel of justice, and that selected that our team was going to be Lommel in Belgium, so here we are. Before we get into the game too much and have a look at what we've been doing in the pre-season, let's just take a minute or two to have a little look about where Lommel's located and a little bit about the place. So for those of you who, like myself, are not experts in Belgian geography, here's a little bit of a, a look at where Lommel are located. So they're right up here near the Dutch border. This region's called Limburg. Uh, it covers part of North East Belgium and Southern Netherlands. Um, it's a kind of Dutch-speaking area, so I guess the guys here probably consider themselves as much Dutch as they do Belgian. Uh, if you notice, the nearest big town is Eindhoven, only about a 45-minute drive away, so nice for shopping and the like, I'm sure. If we get in to have a little look at Lommel itself, you'll notice we've got a centre parks very close. So if I ever fancy a really expensive holiday about a mile away from my house, I know where to go. Coming into the town of Lommel itself, it looks all right in terms of facilities and stuff. We've got a, a couple of chippies, there's a, this is a Turkish restaurant, I think, yeah. A beer shop, cinema. So, you know, we're pretty well set up for, for everything we'd need to get by. One of the first things you need to do, of course, when you move into a, a new place is find somewhere to live. So I managed to find a, a, a good little house within 20 minutes walk of the stadium and I guess this is where all the training facilities and whatever are. So that's pretty good. If we take a little look, look at this gaff. This is what I'm talking about. Oh, we've got a magical crystal in the room so if, uh, if things are going horribly wrong we can uh, yeah, appeal to the spiritual side through that big crystal. Yeah, this gaff looks all right, doesn't it? 1,400 euros a month, considering we're on about 3,700 a week. I think we're going to afford to, to stop there. That looks pretty good to me. And one thing I did notice, actually, is on the walk from the stadium up to the house is this place. Check this out. This is what I'm talking about. A chippy with all sorts of nonsense going on. What else have we got here? Look at this. Big piles of mayo. I mean, they like mayo with their chips in Belgium, don't they? But that is something else. I think, uh, yeah, after a, after a good win on a Saturday afternoon, a stroll home, pick one of these things up, <clears throat> take it home. Jobs are good and we're liking that. So, let's have a little look at the stadium itself. We can uh, we can see here, it's a bit of a, an odd little setup, but I, one I quite like. So we seem to have a, like a main terraced area here that straddles the halfway line on one side. And if we spin around, so we've got seating next to that and a little bit of seating at the end, then a kind of a main stand here, not too many seats in it, but you know, some nice executive boxes and the like over the top of the bench, so I guess that's where the changing rooms and everything are. Then we scroll around here, we've got a bit more seating at the end here, so I guess one of those end bits must be the away section. So the only terrace bit in the ground is here on the halfway line, so that's a bit of a bit of an odd one, so I guess all the, all the sort of nutty ultras, instead of congregating behind the goal, are going to be here on the halfway line with a nice view of everything. So we can't go wrong with that. See, one thing I did notice about Lommel actually as a town is this place is in it. Apparently it's a glass museum. But just in, in just a random big glass cone in the middle of the town. So we're liking that. Yeah, this looks like a pretty cool place for us to be, I reckon. Anyway, let's get back to the game and, uh, and see what we've been up to. So let's have a little look around the club. Uh, as you might remember from the previous episode, Lommel are a team that have pretty much been around this, this B League for the last 15-20 years. They've never done anything much better than that, to be honest. Um, in general, what have we got? We've got a, 
a couple of lo local rivalries, but not against anyone I think that we're actually playing against. For some reason we've got a <laughs> rivalry with Andalect, even though they're nowhere near where we are. Um, according to this, the capacity is 12,500, which I don't think, having looked at the stadium a minute ago, I'd necessarily agree with, but, you know, we'll take it. Facilities are, you know, so-so, but pretty much what you'd expect at this level. So hopefully we can improve them a little bit over time. Uh, in terms of affiliates, we have got an affiliation with Genk. So with a bit of luck, we'll get some promising youngsters from them. We have got a couple of players on loan from them already. The club vision... Uh, the board aren't terribly ambitious at this point. I think they recognise that, you know, it might be a bit of a struggle this first season. So all they want us to do is work within the wage budget, fight bravely against relegation, and reach the sixth round of the cup, which shouldn't be too bad because I think we enter in the fifth round. So the good thing from that is that you know, there's not too much pressure on this first season. So if we're uh, if we only just scrape staying up, I think we'll uh, we'll still be in a job, which is pretty good. In terms of the finances, we don't have a great deal to work with at all. Um, the wage budget, we're just a little bit over, but we're trying to move a couple of players out on loan, so that will squeak that down below that level. Uh, no transfer budget to speak of, but there's been a huge turnover of players, as we'll take a look at in a minute, through the summer, so I don't really want to disrupt that too much, because the team cohesion isn't brilliant already. Um, in fact, we will take a look at that now. Let's have a look at the transfer history. As you can see, look at all these players that have come in over the summer. So a lot of them are, are youngsters who have gone into the development squad, and a few players on loan. Um, out of this lot, there's only two players that I've brought in myself, who are Bakar, who will play on the wing, and Kretien, who is kind of a backup, right-back, centre-back option. Quite a few players went out at the club. Uh, the only one for any money was a, a youngster I sold, because he wasn't going to get anywhere near the team. Let's get into the uh, the tactics screen now and see how we're set up. We got our first game today against Westerlo, so that'll be interesting. Actually, before we look at today's lineup, I should briefly mention our preseason. As you can see, it was pretty encouraging. Um, we did play a few kind of lesser teams early on, and we had quite a lot of trialists in at that point. So it was a bit of a mixed bag there. You know, games that you might think we could win against lower league German opposition. Um, the highlight probably was this win against Sturm Graz, who were a good side from the Austrian top division. And we had a couple of draws here against Dutch second division opposition, so yeah, I'm reasonably encouraged about how things have gone. <clears throat> In terms of the team, this is the kind of way we're going to line up. Two of our better players are these holding midfield players. So what I'm hoping they're going to do is, is to break up the play a little bit. So we're going to be relatively patient. Um, hope that they can win the ball and get the ball out to these wider areas. Jallo up front is fairly quick, so we're going to be looking to get the ball in behind him if we possibly can. But let's get into the game, and we'll see how we get on against Westerlo. So it's always a bit of a <laughs> worry going into the first game of a new save. Um, the pre-season games are all well and good, but you're never quite sure how it's going to go against proper opposition. But that's not a bad start, is it? Glenn Nevin, he's, he's the guy who's regarded as our top player. Um, he's our key player on that on that information screen. Um, he prefers to be a holding midfielder, but we've already got two of those who are good. So he's playing at centre half, and well, <laughs> if he's going to contribute like that, I'm more than happy. Quarter of an hour into the game, we're one up. Westerlo not really had much of the game so far. They got a bit more possession, but well, now they're coming back into it a little bit. So let's demand more from the players. I'm hoping that this season, yeah, you know, we can do well enough not to be involved in that relegation battle at least. Uh, I'd like us to think we can be a mid-table team. We've not really had to improve the squad too much ourselves. Like I said, there was a big turnover of players in the summer, and I think what's come in isn't too bad. I don't see any sort of real glaring areas of weak weakness in the team. So, yeah, I think uh, it's going to depend a little bit on on injuries and fitness and what have you. Um, let's tell them to guard against complacency I think that's important right now but yeah I think we might be able to do okay whether we can challenge at the top end of the table well that's a different matter entirely Westerlo have a highlight here how are we going to defend that corner pretty well Bakar picks the ball up he's one of the players we did bring in on a free transfer over the summer and it's back out to him again can he get the ball in he can but it's cleared fairly easily 
Phillips, the Luxembourg International, picks it up. Jalau, oh, what a finish that is. Oh, but he's offside. Oh, that's unfortunate. What a great goal that would have been. <clears throat> Phillips picked up the ball there and just chipped. Oh, goodness me, he is a little bit offside, isn't he? But that was a great goal. <laughs> Shame it's been chalked off. There we are. Oh, what's happened there? Thank goodness for that. Push the keeper, I think. <laughs> I thought he just had an absolute mare there for a second. So I think we need to make a change. Chrisan has been out injured and um, yeah, isn't really at full fitness at this point. So in spite of the fact Bakar is having a stinker, I think we're going to take him off and bring on a youngster, Zaruri. This is a guy with a lot of potential. So uh, yeah, we're going to try and give him some game time this season and, and see if he can realise some of that potential. Another highlight starts here with uh, we're still low, but we've broken it up again. Kamas, who's one of the players we've got on loan from Genk at the moment, charging down the left. Krizan is still on the pitch at the moment. The substitution obviously not been made yet. Bakar picks up the ball on the other flank. And is that a corner? Yes, it is. But unfortunately, we're not going to see it. <laughs> so clearly, we didn't do a lot with it. Okay. Oh, and we've got an injury here. Our Ukrainian midfielder. So, luckily we've got a, a young Icelandic prospect here who can come on and play in that role. I have no idea how to pronounce that Icelandic name, so I'm just going to call him Bordarsson. Whether it's right or not, goodness knows. I think we're going to demand more, even though they're a little bit nervous. That's focused them up a little bit. Henkens here with a free kick, and headed over by Jallo. So 10 minutes to go, we're one up. I'm fairly happy with this, as things stand, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Oh my goodness, what has happened there? I need to see that again, I think. So they pick up the ball here, it crossed in, it's cleared to the edge of the box. And it's a header from 18 yards. Have you ever seen anything like it? He looks like a big lad, but oh, that's a shame. It would have been nice to finish our first game with a win, but you know, I'll take a point. As you can see here, um, what we've done in pre season and the transfers that were made by the club hasn't really affected how they're seen in the game. We are still very much predicted to finish bottom of this league, and that's kind of highlighted by when you look at the key players here. Those are our two best players, and they're right at the bottom of that key players list. So, yeah, it's going to still be a challenge, I think, but you know, one we're very much up for. In terms of the schedule, I think the next game I'm going to bring you back for will be here against Leuven. Um, the transfer window ends on the 31st of August, so it gives me a chance to go through and, and make any further readjustments that we might make. I don't think there's going to be too much to be done, to be honest. I don't. You know, I'd rather try and get a bit of bit more unity in, in amongst the players that we've already got rather than disrupting things by bringing anyone new in but we may shift a couple out and try and get back under that wage budget. Well I hope you've enjoyed this first episode of Bottom to Top with Lommel here in Belgium. I think this has got potential to be a good save. Uh, it's a, a little club not without its problems and I think it's going to be a bit of a bumpy ride to try and uh, achieve what we want to with the club. But if you have enjoyed the episode I'd be grateful if you could drop a like on there help get me seen by more people and if you haven't subscribed yet please do so and, and take a look through some of the back catalogue my Bournemouth save and uh, my ongoing save holy cow with the Indian national team that's quite a lot of fun too if you've got any comments or hints or tips of how I might turn this team into something half decent please feel free to leave them below I'd uh, yeah appreciate any feedback you've got whatsoever about this uh, first episode and the potential for this series finally just thank you very much for watching um, really appreciate your support and i hope to see you again soon for some more action as we try and take a novel from the bottom to the top bye for now